I want to share my story and why I got sober at 22, my background. I think that it's really important to be vulnerable with you guys and for you to understand where I come from. And I think a lot of you are going through or have gone through some of the things that I went through. And I really felt a calling to share my story. And this is such an amazing community of people. I really cannot wait to see where this goes, what you guys relate to and what I can help with. So the biggest disclaimer that I wanna say before getting into my story is that everyone's background is different. Everyone's perception of what is trauma and what emotional abuse is for someone. It's not about comparing which situation is better or worse. It can be so easy to compare ourselves and our stories with other people. But I really encourage you if you can connect and if you can understand where I come from and I would love to understand where you guys come from. I think that it can make this community really strong and really beautiful. I'll also be sharing advice on my sobriety and how I got sober, what worked for me, what did not. Different methods for sobriety work for different people. It's not an easy journey it can be a very lonely one and at times we don't know what we want we don't know what we need and it's great that there are so many resources so much guidance so many different programs for sobriety spirituality mental health etc do what resonates with you what suits your highest good and take what resonates leave the rest okay so let's get into it i came from a background of on the outside what seems to be a very loving family i have been a cycle breaker in this journey so i saw a lot of the good but also the burdens that I carried. When I was a kid, I was diagnosed with Asperger's. I had a very light soul. I started speaking light language when I was a child. It was really difficult for me to communicate in English. I was very loud. I was very excited. I had a very, very vivid imagination. I was very in tune spiritually, which made it very difficult for me to function as a human. I was bullied a lot and it was really rough up until my teenage years. I was bullied for my weight for my gap in my teeth, my hair. I was a unique child and I was put into a psychology room for a very long time. I was a crystal child. I loved crystals. I would go off about crystals. I would read books. I had such a natural drawing to this. I didn't know why people would make fun of me for it. I felt very alone. I felt like I was never good enough. My dad was always working. My mom was always out doing whatever. I come from a successful family, even though I was taught that I need to suffer for my money. I'm so grateful for the certain privileges that I had growing up. I saw my parents constantly move. We were moving houses all the time. Nothing was ever good enough. My mom and my dad would fight all the time. It didn't feel like a safe environment emotionally. My mom became a licensed therapist and she would really dig into my brain. Always something that I needed to lean into. When I got to high school, I kind of went through this glow up state. I lost weight. I grew my hair out. I started getting into fashion and makeup. I was all about that Tumblr phase. We heart it. I was just all about that how to fit in, social media, what the trends were. Not just this, I felt like I needed to prove myself. Like I was never good enough and I would only receive the love that I felt innately as a child if I changed myself, if I became this shell of myself. I wore this if I acted like this, if I was into this hobby, that hobby. I became this overachiever in high school. I was this AP student, rower. I was so tired. I had heart palpitations. I was in a very emotionally abusive relationship in high school. He cheated on me with all my friends, made me feel like I was crazy, gaslight me, bully me, disinvite me to parties and events always told me that I was not good enough, made me feel this small. And that set the precedent for the relationships that I got into when I was in college, etc. I was so angry from this relationship and I wanted to be popular, as one would call it. And I tried to fit in so hard. I got into college. I got into a top music business program. I got there and I thought, new beginning, new version of myself. I got all these new clothes. I tried to fit this like Y2K style, this black and like pink. 
I don't know, I was very aesthetic with it. I was overwhelmed with the amount of people that wanted to hang out with me, that were inviting me to places. And it felt really good after a period of time where I felt very alone that I would isolate myself. I joined Greek life and I was in another emotionally abusive relationship. I was gaslit, he cheated on me. I didn't do drugs at this point. I was just binge drinking on the weekend. So I was able to balance work and play still in a sense, but I still never felt like I could truly be myself. So I started singing, I started making music. It was shut down, constantly shut down. I went to the Billboard conference and met a really big producer. And what I notice now looking back is that I genuinely just wanted to sing. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to sing, use my voice for something. Every time I tried to make a song, it was shut down. People didn't like it. I would submit it to labels, radio stations, blogs, everyone hated it. Even though the people around me said it was beautiful work, didn't matter. I met this producer in LA. We were alone after a party and he loved my voice, he liked my work and he wanted to work with me. He tried to come on to me, I had to punch him in the face. He said, how else do you think you're gonna make it in this industry? And that shut me down real bad. Made me think that I am no good unless I am working behind the scenes. I will work my butt off. I will make money in this industry still. There was something wrong. I was in therapy and nothing was changing. I wanted to change something. I just did not know how. And when I'm in that environment full of people that care about what other people think, who you know, what brands you wear, where you go. It was very pretentious and I felt like I just constantly needed to prove myself. I constantly needed to get invited to things. I constantly needed to fit in. I never even thought about finding my people. I never really thought about what about me? What do I like? What do I really want? Junior year going into senior year, I discovered cocaine. At this point, I was smoking weed every day. I was drinking every other day. I started going to New York City more and I met all these influencers and celebrities and I was invited to these glamorous penthouse parties. Cocaine made me feel like I was not myself and I loved that. I felt like I became someone that everyone loved to talk to, that I was someone interesting and funny. I would drink and do cocaine, to drink more, to do more cocaine. Before you know it, it's 6 a.m. I'm driving home after lying to my parents. And I cannot tell you every time I went back driving home from the city when I'm all coked up, looking at the sunrise in a haze of just numbness, of knowing that I'm falling down, I would be looking at the sky like I wanted help and I didn't know how to get it. I would sleep for like days on end after that. I put myself in really dangerous situations with people. I was just so numbed out. And after about a year, I had a overdose. I needed to go to the hospital. I cried to my parents on the phone saying, I need help, I don't know what to do. I overdosed on cocaine, I've been lying to you. My mom, who's a therapist, thought she knew what she was doing, told me to come home and that we're gonna put me on house arrest for three months. We're gonna learn how to moderate my drinking. Of course, I hid my cocaine in my lipsticks just in case I would need them at some point when I learn how to moderate because that sounds really intriguing to someone, learn how to moderate because it's not the solution. The solution is a spiritual one. I was so caught up in ego and who I was and the people around me. I was just so embarrassed. And at this point, I was posting funny videos on TikTok. I blew up, it felt good. It was all about me. It was all about my ego and personality. I was becoming a better version of myself by cleaning up a little bit. I was so lonely. No one understood what I was actually going through. I was in therapy. I was in alcohol moderation groups. I was in smart recovery. I was in CBT. It wasn't doing it. It wasn't working. Before you know it, I'm back out there. My parents say, you know, you seem to be moderating your glasses of wine at dinner. You can go out again. I go to the same people again, but it's familiar for me. And I go right back into it. The only thing is I become a better liar. I became a better manipulator. I was not who I wanted to be. And I was scared. I didn't know how to change. I thought that this was life. Not everyone, but the people that were in my bubble, which did include hundreds of people at least. One night, my sister and brother were throwing a party. My parents are divorced as well. They're both happily remarried and I have a way better relationship with them now. I decided to take my keys, drive into New York, go partying out with some models, a promoter, whatever. I was so drunk, so high. 
I was so lost and it, I think my soul just took over. It literally was telling me, I cannot do this anymore. I cannot live like this anymore. And that made me want to die. It made me want to kill myself. I know that this is going to trigger some of you and I apologize if this does. If this is going to be too triggering for you, you can also skip ahead or take a minute or you can stop this video. I left myself a suicide note on my phone, bawling. I tried to drive myself into the divider on a highway. I thought that my car was going to flip and I thought it was gonna be the end. In that moment, I don't know what happened, but a white light I saw like swoop in in front of my car. It looked like a bird of some like wings. My car literally went from this, like this is the divider, it went from this to this. I felt like something moved my car and I slightly bumped into the divider at the rate that I was going I was going about 80 miles an hour. I should have flipped and died, but something literally put me back on the highway and um, I made it home. And when I got home, I started breaking all my mom's flower pots. I was screaming for help. It did not matter what brands I was wearing. It did not matter who I was out with. It did not matter how many followers I had, who I knew, all those things I was taught I needed to care about for so long. I was done. I, I didn't know what to do. I took a knife. I was about to slit my wrists. My mom and my sister tied me down and called the cops on me. They threw me into a psych ward. And I remember the feeling the next morning, I just, I knew I was never gonna have a drink again. I just knew I was never going to ever be the same. When we're talking about rock bottom, that was mine. I didn't have a job. This is after I graduated. It had to get to that point on my journey where I was in the psych ward for about a week, scared to death. I was told I needed to go to rehab went to rehab. I did learn a lot about addiction and all the different ways that alcohol and drugs can affect you as a person, psychologically, the brain. I was ready to go home. My parents last minute told me I needed to go to sober living. I was in sober living for nine months. I was going to AA every day. Had to go to IOP five days a week. I was working as a waitress. I met a lot of people in AA and I felt seen and heard. I think for the first time, I really knew how to be vulnerable and just break the ice. And just after all of this pretentious living, I finally was really being honest with myself and with other people and having other people be honest with me. It felt good. That environment felt really good. I was taught how to live sober. You know, I was eating a lot of junk food. I was working out a lot. I didn't know how to live. Eventually I started learning how to have fun. I was going bowling. I was going hiking and hanging out with people. But in this time, I needed to get out. I, I needed, I felt like I was still in a prison. I finally got a legitimate job in Philadelphia and I moved to Philly, small studio apartment, it was fully furnished, all my utilities, cockroaches everywhere, you know how it is. Um, I got a really good deal, I'm really grateful. I felt blessed. It was like in two weeks, I got a job, I got an apartment, and it was after I told my, it was like a subconscious, I manifested my entire life, but this was the first thing I noticed, that it was like, when I truly believed I deserved better, not just wanted to deserve better, I truly believed that I deserve better. During this time period, I was dating an officer. So I moved to Philly, we break up. And I actually figured out later on that that was my false twin flame. We learned a lot about love and I'm, I'm grateful that we had the spiritual lesson. I never really fully got through the steps, right? But five sponsors total quit on me when I was about step six in. And AA is a lot of work for those of you who have gone or have been in any kind of program similar to it. It is going every day or every other day, meeting with a sponsor to read a book, to do spiritual tasks on your own, to evaluate, to pray, to learn how to be spiritual. Um, but I wasn't spiritually woken. I didn't actually believe in any of it. I was kind of like, all right, like I think that there's something out there. Like I believe in the ocean, I believe in the moon, whatever. But like, I didn't believe in anything. The only thing I knew was that I was somehow magically brought home by an angel the night that I tried to kill myself. After a period of time, I noticed I was always talking negatively. I realized that 
saying I was an addict, saying I was an alcoholic was manifesting that. It was manifesting me to be humble and sit in my chair and suffer so that I am scared of drinking or using again. And I didn't want to live a life of fear anymore. And my soul started to take over. My soul told me, you know what? You need to just be alone. You just need to meditate. This is not working for you. There's a reason for why five different people have quit on you. And it's not because you're not worthy. It's because you need to do something else. And you have something different to prove not to other people, but to yourself. And I started meditating every day. And everyone was like, where are you? Where, where are you at the meetings? Are you okay? I'm concerned for you. That was my favorite one. I'm concerned for you. What also was really funny was I was told that vaping and smoking obsessively was okay, but I couldn't drink or use any other substances. I loved how I felt when I stopped vaping and everyone was like, why did you quit? All right. You don't want me to be happy? You don't want me to be healthy? Like That is manifesting the worst for me. That is sending me bad energy, so no thank you. Manifest happiness for me. I hope that you're doing well. I hope that you're happy. I hope that I can learn something from you. I started to feel worse leaving, worse and worse, than when I came in. I was looking for connection. I was looking for belonging, and I'm grateful that I had that for a while, but I realized that I needed to also be in my skin and needed to come home. We are taught that we need to surrender everything to a God. And this works for tons of people. AA can work for a lot of people. And you know, everyone has their own opinions. Everyone has their own experience. And that's why it's important that even though I had this experience, not everyone's going to have that. Some people really need it. Some people really love it. Some people are very passionate about it and it works for them. It saved their lives. It saved my life. I went to a crystal store one day and I just started feeling good. I just started feeling that inner child come back, like the one that was drawn to those crystals originally. I got interested in it. I started looking at tarot decks. I was like, what are these? I just felt drawn to the one that I have here. I have this tarot of dreams one. I felt this home feeling like to the images, which I found it's like a Syrian type deck. I didn't know why, I just surrendered. That was real surrender. That was, I'm just going to go with whatever God wants me to do, to find my power for what is meant for my highest good, what is meant for me. And I found so much peace and joy in these crystals. Um, I would just sit with them on my body. I would like lay down and just have crystals on each of my chakras. And I would look up chakra meditations. And then I found Aaron Dowdy, Pira Rasa. I found Roxy Talks and I just felt good. I found affirmations. I stopped listening to music. I only listened to sound frequencies and I started learning about manifesting. I started doing manifestation meditations, higher self meditations. I felt really, really good. I met some new friends. I started going to bars. I liked feeling good. Like I would have a Diet Coke or a Red Bull. Like, I just learned how to have fun and I wasn't triggered for it. I wasn't ostracized for it. And I wasn't feeling like I need a drink mm -mm. because I felt good in myself already. I already felt fulfilled. I felt like I didn't need to reach out for anything. Feeling into my energies, learning about my energies. And before you know it, I'm in a situation ship. Treated me like the girlfriend, but didn't want to actually have a relationship. It was BS. And he would text girls in front of me and it was really disrespectful. It got to the point where my voice came out and this was the first time this has ever really happened. I was like, I'm done. I can't do, I can't do this. And he left me in my apartment and ghosted me. I started weightlifting, meditating even more, which was ironic. You would think that I would go back to AA or alcohol. This was like, I, I really tuned in to myself and I, I tuned into that wound of attracting the same kinds of people that abandoned me. I realized that I had a massive abandonment wound that I needed to heal. I needed to realize that I don't always need someone to be happy. I can be on my own. So I was going out and last minute I was leaving the bar and I felt good. It just felt like I was having fun. This six foot four gorgeous man comes up to me. It, you just felt the energy. It was genuine. I looked at him and it felt like home. Like, oh my God, like I know you. He was like the most beautiful man I've ever seen. He was like, I think you're the most gorgeous woman I've ever seen. I need to take you out on a date. It was ironic, I was leaving the bar. He could have easily missed me. I gave him my number, I was leaving the bar. So I really gotta go on a date with this guy. So I went back and I was like, text me. His best friend, he goes like, <laughs> it was so funny. I felt when I was talking to him, the first date, like I was, it was like our higher selves were talking. I, I don't know how to explain it. It felt like this instant connection. We were so honest with each other. He was crazy about me, crazy about me. 
And then a couple weeks in, I got triggered. We had this super strong connection, but I knew this was something in myself that I needed to shift around. He reflected this in me, and I reflected this fear in him. As much as we were drawn to each other, as much as we felt this deep connection, and it felt like love, like very fast, but we didn't say anything. We were reflecting a lot. He helped me get out of my situation at my job. I started doing tarot online. I started to read for other people. And you know how addicting that can get when you are accurate. I wanted to do tarot readings on him. I wanted to do tarot readings on my family, on my friends. That was a new addiction on its own. And I actually needed to stop for a while. I started studying UX because I thought that, oh, this is a job. I want to get out of this job I'm in now. I'm suffering, I'm miserable, I'm doing spreadsheets. I'm getting worked to death. I'm getting paid like crap. And he helped inspire me to do this. He has his own business, still in the corporate world, but it's a very different situation. My fear of receiving and not, you know, needing to suffer for work was also being triggered. My fear of not being good enough. But during this time, I started doing online readings. I didn't put my face in it yet. I was just having fun. And then eventually I did one with my face and I felt good. I felt like I was able to connect to people. I think I was scared to put my face in it because I didn't want it to be about my ego. I wanted it to be about what I was saying, my heart. I've had that before on TikTok where it was all about my face and about me and blah, blah, blah. it's not, it's about my message. Before you know it, I started getting orders. I had no idea how it happened. I genuinely did not think I was gonna get orders. You know, I was always doing side hustles. I tried to make a clothing brand. I tried to sell candles at a farmer's market every weekend. I was making no money, I went broke. All the businesses I've had in the past were failures. They didn't work, I made no money. So this, this was the first time that I was actually making money on something, doing something I loved. and. I was helping people. As I was healing myself, my own wounds, as I was starting to meditate every single day, as I was tuning into my spirituality, as I started learning more about decks and I started doing Oracle decks, I was healing other people through my embodiment, through my personal learning. It felt like it was a soul connection every reading. It was like I knew what you were going through because I understand, I've been there. Maybe not the same situation, but I got messages, channel messages, through intuition. And one day, I swear, I heard a voice. I've never heard a voice before. Something told me to lay down, put my amethyst on my third eye. I sat there for like five minutes and I saw the cosmos. I saw life. I saw the creation of life. It was like a huge panorama. It was like the sun, this golden sun, overcoming these like trees, dead trees, these hands, like ashes almost, and it made them into flowers. Through this, there was a the face of death being molded into this like light baby into rebirth. So I think that the images on my tarot cards actually helped me in my awakening because it made me see things spiritually and conceptualize it. And I was shown all of these magical things. And then I saw a face come up to me, beautiful light face. And it was like, you are love. You are love, you were created. You are a creator, you are love. And I bawled my eyes out, that was my spiritual awakening. So it's interesting that I was drawn to all these different things. I was drawn to my twin flame and then I went through that awakening and I had complete faith, I knew. I knew, I felt euphoria. But through that, I also knew I need to change my life. I need to do something different. So I started doing more videos because I had much more faith in it. And it wasn't for money. It was just because I felt that it was my purpose. It was like my heart driving me to do it. I was editing my videos at work. I did not care. I would just be drinking coffee, eating my famous Amos cookie. I was still working hard. I was, you know, but I didn't, I had a fear of quitting. I didn't know how to leave the corporate world behind. After studying it for so many years, I was in this top program for it. I didn't know. And then I got my unicorn cards and it told me I was gonna be a healer. So I had to have faith in that, but I thought I was gonna do it on the side still because you know, we're taught that we need to be in a corporate job or if we need to be an entrepreneur, it needs to be like a legitimate thing. I was studying UX. I was doing my tarot readings. I was working a full-time job. I did not know how to balance anything. I just was doing all of it and I had no idea what to do. And my soul, I swear, this is, this is the tower moment. It took over and it was like, I'm done with all of it. I'm not doing UX anymore. I can't do it. I need to take a break at least. Maybe I'll come back to it. I'm gonna stay open-minded. 
I'm gonna have an open heart and I'm just gonna do what my heart is telling me to do because I couldn't take it anymore. It was like that high school mode was coming in. It was like I was an overachiever again and I just had no say in what I wanted. I had people telling me what to do. I feel abundant. I feel good. What is holding me back? It was my job. It was the fear, the fear of losing something so familiar, losing what I was taught. You know, my parents being disappointed or concerned for me, people being concerned for me. They didn't want to hear it. I cut cords with my mom. We didn't talk for four months, five months. I did a cord cutting meditation, which I recommend a lot to people. The next day she apologized for how she parented me. And now my dad is proud of me after, you know, me being proud of myself. That completely changed our relationship. He's a lot more open-minded now too. I think that people have their own perceptions of life and what people should be, what you should be in their life. When you don't fit that, it creates anxiety. That's why people don't always want the best for you. You can be raising your vibration. People want, people want to keep you down here. So that's why when I say like, it's okay when people start to fall away, it's okay that you're alone, you feel alone, you're never alone. You're guided by spirit. You're gonna meet new people that align with you. It's gonna take some time because you also are gonna need to break the pattern of being alone, of being self-sufficient. You're gonna feel the sensitivity to other people's energies, like even at the grocery store kind of thing. Like, it's gonna shift, everything shifts though. Everything is temporary, so you go through this massive, dark night of the soul and you come out and you are learning compassion and your higher self and all these things and then coming out of that that's also a whole transition that's also another rebirth there's all these kinds of rebirths that you experience for my twin flame and i it took us months but i was very patient every time i wanted to give up i wanted to break up i was manifesting love with him and adventure and you know every time i was manifesting i would get so mad at myself it was when i literally gave up i stopped Caring. And I just started living, knowing it's gonna happen eventually on the universe's terms, trusting the universe, like actually trusting the universe. I learned how to do that. That was also a transition I needed to learn. Manifesting, manifesting consistency, and then into surrendering, like really trusting the universe. It all came flowing towards me. A loving, committed relationship with travel. We went to Ibiza and I had a whole other awakening there. I had to go through a parallel life regression. So I had a parallel timeline that I was supposed to be on if I drank again. I also had a past life regression there. I learned a lot. I learned a lot about my life. Me and my twin flame are in union now. Learning how to create space, how to observe without judgment, how to live as my higher self, how to live my soul for my highest good. Every experience I've been through, good or bad, is a blessing because I get to help someone else. I don't wear it on my sleeve. I forgive myself, I forgive others. I see it as a blessing. And how I see it shifts everything. I have gratitude for the good and the bad. I manifest the light. I always manifest the light. When I do readings for myself now, I only pray for it to be for my highest good and for others to be it for their highest good, not to get intel and like control things. It's like, it's for your highest good. This is what you need to know. This is what you need to learn. This is what you need to experience. That's how I approach readings now and spirituality and manifestation. I see that my path from, I used to manifest very specific thing. I want this to happen. Like I wanna have this amount in my bank account, which did happen, but now I'm giving the universe space to give me things with infinite possibilities. There's so many ways something can happen. The how and the when is up to the universe, but I am the what and the now, because I believe that's for my highest good. I believe that we are in full control of our realities and that we're working with the universe. But there are also higher consciousnesses that know more than we do. Take this as it resonates, but it's not that I'm a victim. It's not that I don't believe that I deserve abundance and things like There's all these spiritual lessons I need to learn. I relate, you know, because I, I think there's a balance. There's a dance between worlds, right? There's a dance between this reality and the 5D, 4D, because it's like living in the moment, being grateful and learning joy, learning how to be present. But it's also manifesting and knowing that the end result is coming no matter what. It's also 444 on my clock and my magic number. I started seeing angel numbers during this journey, by the way, and it was like, I would be Googling every single number. I'd be like, what is 6161? It's like the wrong way. And it would actually be like something that's the wrong way. Some crazy things. 444 I learned is actually about protection. It's about going within for that inner wisdom. 222, 888, 777. It was awesome. I loved it. 
But every time I see an angel number, I'm like, oh, I'm being communicated to. Ooh, yes, these mystical messages. I have nature in my life. My cat is healthy now. She was like obese in my little apartment before. I have my dream body. Since I started this journey in November, I lost 30 pounds. So shadow work, weightlifting really did it for me. Changing my diet, eating intentionally with love, cooking with love. Yeah, that's my story. And I'm so grateful that you have watched to this point. It is long. I hope you learned something from it. I hope that I was able to relate to or help you leave in the comments how you related to this, what you connected with. And I'm sending my love and light. Have an amazing rest of your day.